Hi, and welcome to question two of paper two, 2020 Leaving Cert or A Level Maths. As always, if you've got a copy of these notes, just send me an email at shanetroy.gmail.com and click subscribe to check out other videos. Now, question two here is kind of coordinate geometry, but they're not asking us to graph anything, but you know what? No harm. Now, I'm going to really, this is your y-axis and your x-axis. Now, very crudely, okay, let's maybe uh, figure up in twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. So if that's ten on your x-axis, maybe go up in twos here, two, four, six, now ish. That's six on your y-axis. So four on the x, six on the y will be here. That's your point A. Now minus two, so minus two, minus four on the negative side of the x-axis, and positive two, that's your B value. And then 10 of the x here on the y, so it's actually on the y-axis. That's your C value. So that's what they look like. So it's a triangle. Now, it's very, it could be very small on your device. So apologies if it's small on your screen. That's that triangle. Now, part A says, find the length of AB. So here. And that's between um, 4, 6 and negative 2, 2. So there are, are two coordinates. Now you could have used, you know, um, like she couldn't. You know, I was going to say he just Pythagoras, but no, no, okay, let's let's ignore that. Um, well, you, know, you still could actually by creating this triangle here, okay, and that's a difference of six units and a difference of four units. Okay, I just use Pythagoras, so the hypotenuse squared, so that's the C value is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides, four and six. And then you should have got C is equal to the square root of four squared is 16, plus six squared is 36. And my answer should be 52. Okay, now I have the answer drawn on the next page out the, a different way. And let's see if I get, if that's 52, it should be the same thing as two squared or 13. The more traditional way would be to use the distance formula. And they're kind of hinting at that, or kind of hinting at that. Now, the distance formula is Pythagoras, okay, just rearranged. And if I said like c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared, this is a, this is b. So just to point that out. Now, it's Pythagoras' theorem idealized for coordinates. So the two coordinates I'm using are 4 and 6 minus 2 and 2. And I'm going to label them. So first x, first y, second x, second y. And it wouldn't matter if I swapped them around and called the, this my first x, first y. The only reason I've chosen this is literally it's the first number I see. Now, I often get students mixing this up and they call that x at 1, x2, y1, y2. Now I mark paper 2 so I see this just whatever. Now not a huge amount but still it seems to be a misconception. So just pointing it out, x first then y. And then a second point, x2, y2. Now, if there was a third point, x3, y3, but there's no real formula that we have to worry about a pass level that we'd have to come across that. Anyway, once I have my points labeled, it's only a matter of substitution okay, into the correct formula. So wherever I see, let me just clear off some of the fluff there. Where I see x2, I put the number I've identified as x2. And because it's minus, I'm going to put it in the brackets. So I don't technically need to, because it's the first number, but I just kind of say always put it in the brackets. Now the x1 value, I identified as being 4. Now because it's not negative, it won't matter if, it's, if I put it in, if the sign won't be changed. Okay, But if that was a negative number, that minus times minus would have done something. But it wasn't minus, so it's not a big deal here. The y2 value was plus 2. So I put that in there. And then the y1 value was 6. And that goes in here. Now at that stage, I have like fully correct substitution into correct formula. But I could put that through the calculator. And it would bring me up my answer. And no harm having practice using the calculator. Okay, So big square root. Now if you include all the brackets that I've identified there. Um, those brackets take away 4 and squared. Now it's hard to program it right, but it's doable to take away 
six close brackets and then squared. Okay, so if I press equal, I get two squared 13, but if I change that, that should be square root 52. Which is simple, okay, won't give you square root, square root 52 is equal to, yeah, so it is. So the answer we got on the last page, we just had to simplify it, okay. Um, but the calculator will automatically simplify. And that's why it's given in that form, and then decimal form roughly around 7.2. That's it. Okay, so that's part A. Now part B, part one. So this is a uh, midpoint. So again, the midpoint formula is given to you in the math tables in the section on quarter geometry. I have my two points. I have them labeled. I substitute them in. Okay, so X1 is four. I've identified that. Now all you're really doing here is getting the average of the Xs. So the second part of this formula is the X2 value, which is minus two. Okay. Now, 4 plus minus 2 is the same thing as 4 minus 2, which is 2. That's why I get it down here. Now, 2 over 2 is going to be 1. So that's the x values. I've got the average of them. I do the same thing for the y's. So it's 6 on, on y1, 2 is y2. If you're going to get the average of something, uh, you add them together and divide by the number of them, which in this case is 2. So 6 over 2 is 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And that's it. If I had drawn them, we said that D was the halfway between um, those two. If I had went back to the graph I had drawn, and I said, look, what's halfway there? Okay. I said, look, it's kind of one, that's six, one, three, one, four, maybe, okay. which is kind of what I got. So I kind of have a ballpark. Now, the graph wasn't very good, uh, the, the, the pilot diagram I drew, but look, it's up. Now, part two here um, says, in the triangle ABC, the point E, you know, given that, that's this one, seven, three, is the midpoint of AC. Show that DE is parallel to BC. Now, I know D, I've literally just found it. Okay, that's one, four. I knew B, now B was minus two, two, and C was 10, zero. So, simplest way, if they're parallel, their slopes should be equal. Okay, so if I find the slope, and the answer is done here, I find the slope of, now on the notes here, I found the slope of BC first. Okay, so I have my slope formula. I have my points B and C. I label them first X, first Y, second X, second Y. I substitute them in. Now, I could use the calculator and go straight to the answer, or just work it down. Zero take away two is negative two. 10 take away negative 2 is the same thing as 10 plus 2, which is 12. And then simplify that, that's 1 minus 1 sixth. I found the slope of, of DE. Okay, same thing. Okay. The two slopes were equal, therefore they must be parallel. Okay. Now the last part there, part C, says find the area of the triangle ABC. That's this big triangle in, in, in here. Now, there's different ways of doing that, but if, it's, if it is in quarter geometry, there is this formula here, is the area formula for use in quarter geometry. But it only works when one point is on the origin. Okay. Now, none of these points, A, B, or C, are on the origin. So we have to move one of them to the origin. Now, for some reason, I chose to do that with point A. Now, to move this to zero, zero, I have to move it negative four in the x direction, negative six in the y direction. And then I've translated that point A to the origin. If I do that to one point, I have to do the same thing to the other two points. So I'm for the point B, the coordinate B, I move it four in the negative x direction. I move it six in the negative uh, y direction. So it's effectively take four from negative two is negative six. Take six from plus two is negative four. I'm doing the same thing there for 10, 0. It might be smarter to move this to 0, 0. But look, I didn't, so it is what it is. I then put the two points I find, I can call them x1, y1, x2, y2 for the formula. Put them in. Work it out now. Putting them in is easier said than done. I do see a mistake there for some reason. I have an extra bracket here. Okay, but... These bars here, in this case, mean absolute value. So even if your answer is negative, you just turn it positive. You can't have a negative area. 
So it's a half times. Now, x1 times y2 take away x2 times y1. So minus 6 times minus 6 take away plus 6 times minus 4. Now, that's what these values are. So x1 was the minus 6. y2 was minus 6. So you see that over here. Then the x2 was 6, and the y1 was negative 4. Okay, and you see that here. Again, multiply them out, put it to the calculator, whatever. <clears throat> Make sure it's a positive answer, and that's what I got, 30 square units. And that's it. Now, it's possible you could have used, because we could have found the length of, actually, we already know the length of AB. I think it was 2 squared 13, I think. Um, we could have found the length of AC. So we could have, and we could have found the length of this. Then we could have used Heron's formula. We could have also then used cosine rule to find the area in between here. It's not the area, the angle here. And then used area is equal to half AB sine C. Now, both Heron's formula and the area of a triangle formula would be just more work. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, just more work. So... That should be it. So that's the end of question two for paper two, 2020, ordinary level, um, past maths. Uh, if you want the copy of the notes I work enough, just send me an email at shanetrygmail.com. And for the rest of the videos in the playlist, just click subscribe and they should become um, visible to you. Okay, so thanks a million.